Beginner Laser Project 18, actually beginner to intermediate, because some of this is going to get to be a little bit more complicated and complex than what I've done earlier. And what I'm going to be making in this video are haunted houses. And they're all laser cut. And we're going to be, I'm using mostly Dollar Tree wood shapes, like this one here that I've done a test grid on. And they're a dollar and a quarter, not a dollar, but it's one option. The other option is to use eighth inch plywood. So where do you get eighth inch plywood by the sheet? Because I know if you go to a craft store to get eighth inch plywood, you're going to get a little square like this for like $15, and that's ridiculous. However, if you have a Homely Depot near you, that's something that they stock. And you can get a 4x8 sheet of 8th inch plywood from there. I don't recall what it is. It's like $15, $17, something like that. But that's some place to get it. Now, we'll go on to uh, what these are. So, here is one example. This is painted before laser cutting. And then to get the colors inside with the dark blue and the yellow for the, light, the lighted windows and so on. That is vinyl, also from Dollar Tree. Although you can use, if you have a Cricut or a Cameo silhouette or something like that, and you have a lot of that uh, vinyl, go and use it. Otherwise, Dollar Tree, buck and a quarter, you can get a whole roll of it. And lots of different colors. So this is one option. This is two layers and with colors behind it. Uh, there's, you could do a single cut, like this here. So that's just open on the back. So there's a lot of options here on what you can do with these cut files and I will put a link in the description on designbundles.net where you can purchase this uh, bundle and I don't recall what it was, it wasn't very expensive but this will give you 10 different designs and I have taken those designs and as we go on the computer I'll show you how I modified them to fit the way I wanted to do this uh, as they come they're set for what they call a, a multi-layer or multi-cut and engrave all in one layer. I don't like to do that. I like to split my things up and I like to change things around and maybe cut certain things out and not others and maybe infill this or not infill that or maybe just make a line engrave. Uh, for example, one of these here, this one here, has a combination of cutouts, line engraves, and infill should be that little pathway heading up to the house and this one was also reduced in size I made this 75 percent of the size that was given you can also scale these up larger and I'll explain about some of the changes you have to make when you do that for the the bases because uh, if you just enlarge it by a certain percentage the uh, opening here in the base where the slots going is going to be too big so that has to be allowed for. Same with if you shrink it down, for example, uh, this one here, this is just a straight cutout, is 75% of the original size. I had to resize my slots so that they would fit. Another option with this is this one here where you could put like a tea light inside it. Um, you could put a translucent vinyl behind this if you wanted to, or um, acetate or cellophane or something, uh, the yellow in color to make these look like uh, spooky lit up windows. This could also be painted. Uh, I did paint my some of these first and we'll go into that in detail as well as we get on with this project. Um, everything I'm doing here is cut on the longer B1. You will need to run a test on your material. For example if you bought these Dollar Tree hearts you'll need to run a test grid on it to find out what would be the best cut setting for your laser and this grid right here, and yes, I know you can make one in light burn, but this one here is already made and you can download it from our website for free. There'll be a link in the description for that. And it doesn't matter if you're using Dollar Tree wood, eighth inch plywood, quarter inch plywood, I will show you how to resize these bases in slots so that everything will fit together. What we need to do first here, I need to go onto the computer and show you how I am making some of these changes. Yeah, I'm doing everything here from Lightburn. If you're wanting to use laser gerbil, you're on your own. I'm going to show everything here in Lightburn. And right up front here, this is going to be very, very detailed for those that are not very familiar with how to do some of these things. So if you are experienced with this, you may want to fast forward through some of it or just jump around. 
Uh, it's detailed for a, for a purpose, that being that everybody knows how to do this right off the bat. So, first thing I got to do here, I'm set up for my longer B1. I do not have the laser connected right now. We're just going to do the design. So I need to bring in my file. And then we'll just pick one of these. I'm using the SVG formats. I'll just bring in, so there's number four. And as I said, this is a multi-mode file. As you can see up here. So to look at that and see what all is involved with it, we can open this up and see that for fill, it is set for 400 millimeters per minute at 100% power, which would, the 33 watt laser would just burn the wood up on 8 inch plywood. The line, which should actually be, uh, the line engraves is set for 6,000 millimeters per minute, 20% power. Yeah, so this is why I don't like to use uh, what just comes with it. So we're going to cancel that and get out of that. So here's our design. And if we were to run this just as it comes, we'll put up here and see how long it would take. It would take 14 hours, 50 minutes, and 45 seconds. And it would look like that when we're done. Everything would be black instead of white or bare wood. And you would still have the cutouts. But I'm going to do this different. So get out of that. First thing I'm going to do here is, because this will all not fit on a Dollar Tree shape, I'm going to highlight these up here, and I'm just going to drag them out of the workspace, like so. I'm going to highlight the rest of this. I'm going to make that my blue layer, I'll call that layer 1, which it will be a line engrave, and it will be at 15,000 millimeters per minute, at 85% power, and again, this is on a 33 watt laser. But I don't want everything to be like that. I want some of the part of this to be cut out, and I need to select another part of it to make that second layer. So, what I'm going to do here will blow this up a little bit up in the center where we can see it. So, I'm going to select this outer layer, this outer line right here. That's going to be double zero which is now going to be my cut and my cut will be 800 millimeters per minute and 90 percent power and in most cases one pass will work however on Dollar Tree plywood it can be unpredictable so therefore I make two passes to make sure I don't have anything hanging up okay now I need to use this as well for the second layer which would be the backing so what I'm going to do here is do control C I'm going to click over here I'm going to do a control V that just copied that over there. So we'll just kind of scoot him out of the workspace. Now I need to pick out what I want cut out here. And what I want to remain as a line engrave. Everything in blue will just be a line engrave. But I want my windows to be cut out. So what I can do here, and I'll blow this up, make it a little bit easier to see. I can select this here. Get that my double zero. And you got these windows down here, you can do one at a time. Or you could possibly select them all. You can do that. Yep. Yeah, we have a window over here. These other little things up here look like shingles and bricks and so on. I want to keep those as they are. That's just going to be a line engrave. Now down here we have a fence, so we need to be able to see through that because we're going to put some uh, dark blue vinyl behind it. So if I just highlight on these here, and I'll have the same thing over here on the other side. Now here we have some windows. I want those to be cut out. Here we have a window, but I do not want to get the eyebrow. I want to leave that as a line engrave. We'll have those parts cut out. Cut out each one of these. And of course, we want the door cut out. Now, see, there's a window I missed. 
Put him in there. We have two windows right here. We have two windows right here. We have a window up here in the belfry. Now another option here are these steps. You can either just do a line engrave right there, or you can have those cut out and put a uh, contrasting color vinyl behind them. And I think that's what I'm going to do on this one, so I will highlight these here, and I will probably put a dark blue vinyl behind that. Like so. Now we can take this down in size and look it over we didn't miss anything. So we need to call this something. We'll hit save here and we're going to call this uh, Haunted House. I think that was number four. Save that. That way you won't lose your project if something happens. Now the next thing you'll need to do is measure the thickness of two pieces of your project. Let's run over here. I'm going to grab one of these. Get down here where I can work on it. And you can work on things outside of the workspace. So right off I need to make that my cut layer. Now these little guys here are the tabs the slots for the tabs. So you're going to need to measure two pieces of that whatever material you're using sandwiched together so we can resize these. Okay, I am using a uh, eighth inch plywood from Homely Depot for uh, this because I ran out of little Dollar Tree pieces and this will also give me a uh, opportunity to show you how to scale this up and down. So two of those pieces put together measures 0.22. I'm working in inches here not millimeters. You, you can do it in millimeters as well. So what we need to do here is highlight these. Go up here, make sure the padlock's unlocked. And I'll put in .22. That resizes those so that the tabs will fit. I can relock my padlock. So now this would be the base and you'll need two of those. Uh, you can just delete the other one up here or you could convert that one too. I'm just going to delete it. This one here, do a control C. Pop up there, do a control V. So now I have two of them. So this is all ready to cut as it is. Now what if we wanted to make this bigger or smaller. We can do that real easy. So let's take and well, need, one thing I need to do here is group my images here so that I don't start turning them apart when I move things around. And I'll do the same thing with these here. Make sure they're grouped. Otherwise when you move them you could move a slot or something could happen and then when you cut them out they aren't going to fit. So back over in my workspace here. So let me measure. My pieces are 16 inches square. Well that is actually larger than the uh, laser bed. Now well, well, well it's not. It's larger than the work area on the laser bed. So we got to keep things in perspective here. So right now our haunted house is 7.2 wide by 6.2 four nine high. So let's uh, say we want to take this to 10 inches wide or better yet let's go by percentage. It'll be a little bit easier to scale on other parts that way. First I'm going to save this as Haunted House 4 but expanded. Now let's take this up to go 150 percent. So now it's 10.8 by 
4, which will fit on my work, work piece, no problem. Uh, another thing I want to do is put that in the center, I think right now. Now I can also cut some of my other parts out of here. I can take these two and get them out of the same piece. I cannot get the, I need to make the, resize those as well. We're going to do that here in a minute. Let's, let's do the back layer right now. So that is going to go to 150%. Drag him out of the way. You could also put that into a library if you wanted to. So I'm going to take these here. And increase these by 150%. However, that changed our slots, I'll betcha. We're going to ungroup that again. Reselect my slots here. We need those to be 0.22. See, now they're 0.33. So we'll unlock this. Back to 0.22. Back to 0.22. So now we have this all set up. I'm going to hit save here. And I will also regroup these. Now we have this all set up for an expanded version. Okay, now what if you want to make it smaller? So let's go back to the original that we just did here a minute ago, a Haunted House 4. So here's our original. Now we're going to be doing pretty much just the opposite. First thing I'm going to do is save as. I'm going to call this Haunted House 4 Shrunk. We're going to take the Haunted House itself here. Now we're going to go to 75%. Whoops, make sure your padlock's locked. We'll go over here to this guy. Seventy five percent. Come up here. Seventy five percent. Now that just made our slots too small. So I need to do here now. We select that. Oh, I guess I didn't group that before. And we reselect these here. And we need to change that height. And make sure your padlock's unlocked here. You'll screw up your tab hole the other way. Change that to 0 0.22. The same thing down here. 0.22. And what I'm going to do now, what I'm thinking about, is regroup these so that we don't lose anything. Hit save, and we're ready to laser. Okay, for this one cut here, I'm going to be using my uh, enlarged version since I have this large piece of wood. So I could take these guys and I can get them out of the same piece real easy. I don't see any way that I'm going to be able to get this shape out of that too. That's going to have to be my back layer. But for right now, I'll take this guy and slide him off the workspace. I'll grab this one and drag it in here. I'll put him about up there. I'm going to take one of these. Whoops, I've got them all grouped together. I just want to take one of them. That'll be the bottom layer of the pedestal stand. And I'll set it down there. Make sure I regroup that. And regroup that one. So this is going to be my first cut. And you're wondering how long that's going to take. Up here this little screen. It'll take 7 minutes and 34 seconds to cut that out. So I need to get the laser connected, and I do have it plugged in, I'll turn it on, 
that you probably just heard because it makes a lot of noise. Air assist on the longer B1 will come on in light burn if you have it set up here for air. So we're all set there. And of course this is all uh, this layer right here. It's marked labels. I, I don't relabel my layers. Uh, you can though if you wish. And I'm using absolute coordinates. So now I need to get connected here. Column 4. My console. Port failed to open. Already in use. Go to the other port. Column 3. There we go. At home. Now I need to get my focus set. I'll go back to the other camera. Okay, this is optional, but for your front layer and possibly your base pieces, you may want to paint them first. And I'm using uh, what's called Rainy Day Gray. It's right here. This particular bottle was broken on the bottom. So I, that was a surprise when I went to squeeze it out and it all came out the other end. So that's what I'm using on here. It's all streaky right now because it's in the process of drying. And you want it to be dry before you do your engraving and cutting. So while that is drying, I'm going to get this set up to cut our back layer. Okay, to set focus on the longer B1, if you're not familiar with it, it's got a little guy, a kickstand that kicks down, and I need to raise that up. Got a little kickstand to go down all the way. Put that set down on the material, and retighten the thumb screw, and then put that back up. So now I'll take this home, and if you're not sure if you're work in the right at work area if you're using a smaller piece for example one of the Dollar Tree shapes frame it before you make your cut so there we are we're home I can just hit start again this is the uh, larger version and my cut and speed again on this is 800 millimeters per minute 90% power and two passes I would most likely cut on one pass. I'm looking at some of these and they are dropping out. But if you get any kind of weird grain that could prevent that from dropping out, then you're going to have a dickens of a time getting it cleaned up. And air assist is on. I can hear my little pump over there running. If I did not want my base to be painted, or at least the top layer to be painted, I could have take, got them both out of this piece. Now what I do when I get this 8th inch plywood is I generally cut it into 16 inch squares because that fits most of my laser beds. I, I do uh, keep a couple other ones. I'll cut a 16 by 32 for my larger format lasers. But generally I do 16 by 16, uh, occasionally 12 by 12, depending on what the upcoming projects are. Here's our back layer. Cut out. It should just drop right out like that. Of course, should have some pieces to clean up. It's not necessary to paint the back layer unless you wanted to paint the areas where the uh, windows are, or the steps or something. You, you can also paint. We'll get to that here when I get into uh, putting this together. And I need to clean this up and get my other piece. It should be dry by now. Maybe I should have had a second coat of paint, but I didn't have enough paint to give it a second coat. So maybe some of those streaks will add some uh, ambiance to it. Okay, to do our front piece. I'm going to grab this here. I'm going to bring it over here, probably up a little bit. I'll grab one of these again. It's going to be my top of my base. I'm going to set him there. And I can take off and cut. Okay, this is doing the line engrave first. And if I uh, decide that it wasn't quite dark enough, I could have, probably wouldn't have hurt to have turned the power up a little bit on that, but I can also uh, run that particular layer by itself a second time if I desire to. We'll see how it looks when it's done. A lot of times you're not going to know exactly how a piece of wood is going to react uh, to, because of the different grain patterns in it and how well your line of grave is actually going to come out even though you ran some tests. And I've got a uh, at least one spot I see on here where it's not really as dark as I would like it to be. So we'll go back and uh, 
I'll probably re-hit that particular one and I'll show you how I do it. So now it's starting on the cuts, it's cutting out all the windows. So as you can see, the paint scorches just a little bit around those cut edges, which uh, because we're doing a haunted house and it's supposed to look old and all that kind of stuff, adds a nice effect to it. If you were doing a project where you have your wood painted and you did not want that scorching on there, you would cover the entire thing with blue painter's tape, do your cuts, and then peel all the tape off. Then you won't have that scorching around the edges. Here's a little eyebrow over the window right here. That did not uh, engrave as dark as I'd like it to. In fact, I might uh, actually do an infill on that now. What I need to do here to just select that one part, we'll select this. I'm going to ungroup it again. We'll blow this up. I'm going to select just that eyebrow over that window. I'm going to make that another layer. And I'm going to do offset fill. And I'm going to do 15,000 millimeters per minute at 50% power. And I might take that down to 20% power. I want to see how this is going to look first. And always run it again if I want. Now in order to run just that layer, what I will do is turn off the top two. That will run just that one layer there. It's also very important that you do not move your project. I'm working from absolute coordinates, of course, so this will go right back to that spot as long as I don't move it. Okay, here's our cutout piece, and again, I'm not going to move this from where it is. I'm just going to run that one layer with the offset fill on the little window eyebrow right there. We have to take this out of there. There's our cutout piece. And this will be our top layer of our base. And everything should drop right out of that. Um, I added a little bit of color to that with a Sharpie because it wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it to be on that eyebrow right there. You could also infill that with uh, an artist brush and some acrylic paint, but the Sharpie was handy. Okay, back here in Lightburn, I've opened up, uh, I've started a new project. We want to bring in the graphic for that, and this happens to be haunted house number one. You can see it comes in pieces like this. There's quite a few parts to it, and I need to be able to fit that onto my project board. And I'm going to be using that eighth-inch plywood again, the 16-inch square. I have to move some of these parts around, and then we're going to have to do some modifications. So I'm going to just kind of scooch all these other parts off to the side. I'll take my uh, house itself up here into the center so I can work with it better. Again, I'm going to turn it all to that uh, line engraved layer. And I can blow this up and make the changes I want to make on it. Of course, we're not doing a back layer to this. That's uh, part of this. That's this piece down here. In fact, while I'm here, let's just change all these over to the cut layer. All right, blow this back up. It's back over where I can play with it. We've got a lot of windows in here. So I'll select those, make them a cut. Here on this door. Now, these here, I'm going to not only change them to another layer for a cut, but I'm going to flip them so that the rounded part is on the top. To do that, I'm just going to go up to this little guy and flip it. I'll do the same thing with this one over here. Flip it up. I hate to be the window washer in this building. Over here to this belfry. Take your time when you're doing this. It's very easy to miss something. Over to the other belfry here. Take this down and take a look at it. It looks like I got everything I wanted to get. An option would be this piece on the bottom right here. Whether or not you wanted that cut out, I'm going to leave that solid and just let it do a line engrave. So what I want to do with this now 
is group it. Okay, I measured the thickness of my material, and although it says it's eighth inch plywood, it actually measures 0.11. So that makes a difference on some of your tabs. So this file was set up for three millimeter plywood. Uh, this plywood measures 0.11 or 0.27 millimeter. Um, I'm not going to make any changes here. There, you could change the uh, tab depth, but I don't think it's going to be necessary to do that here. I think everything should fit together just fine. So now the next process would be, do I want to paint this or do I want to leave it as natural wood? If you have decided I'm going to leave this as natural wood, uh, you could paint it. Uh, you would want to paint it before you cut it, of course. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to leave it as natural wood. And of course, since I'm using a large piece here of 16 by 16, I am going to be able to get all of my cuts on one sheet here. Take this guy and move him over. Bring him in here. Yeah, let's bring him a little closer together. Now if you're using Dollar Tree wood, you can obviously uh, do this in separate pieces. And I could have made this larger or smaller, I'll just leave it as it is, as it was designed. So my total work area here, and I probably could have shrunk that down a little more, is 10 by 12, roughly. So what I want to do next is center that and then get my wood set up on the laser. Another little tip here is uh, when you're using a honeycomb board and you have little bitty pieces that can fall down into those honeycombs, uh, make sure your board is cleaned out good because if uh, those little pieces are hit with the laser again as it goes by, they can catch fire a little bit and scorch the bottom of your project. So it's always a good idea to give it a few taps and get it cleaned out good. You also don't want any little pieces sticking up because that would hold your uh, project up and you would be out of focus. So we'll get this set back in there. Also on this uh, plywood from uh, Homely Depot, uh, one side has this nice finish like this. The other side has this kind of neat texture. And I think for this one, I'm going to use this side as the front, just to be different. It'll kind of give it a look of, I don't know, wood siding on a castle? I don't know. My focus is already set. Turn my laser back on. Make some noise. Make sure I'm connected at home. Make sure my cuts and layers are on and correct. Air is on, and hit start. Something I had forgotten to do when I was doing the initial layout of this was to uh, change that very, very outer line to a cut. So uh, when it first went through, it did engrave. I just added a layer and went back and turned it into a cut. So now it's going back over that same spot. You can do that as long as you do not move your project at all. Okay, now we're all cut out. Put this off of there. So all my pieces drop out, and they did. So I got a perfect cut there, and with using the uh, Texture side of that, you know, it's working in the back. Using the texture side of that kind of make that look pretty neat. Now we got to do some assembly. We're going to assemble this uh, little box type castle here first. So you've got a front and a back. You have two sides, and you have the bottom. And these just fit together like so. All the tabs will line right up in there. Then your side pieces go on with the flat side up. And 
they will interlock with the sides. Like so. Then you'll have the other side to go on. It'll look like this. You need to hold that together so you can glue it. Or you could glue it and assemble it. It'll take your pick. I just like to put a rubber band around it. Like so. That holds everything together pretty well. So I can get my CA glue on there. And I'll show you how I do that. I do it from the outside. I'm using the Tight Bond Thin CA glue and some accelerator. It doesn't have to be this brand. It can be the Tight Bond brand. They both work the same. And I start with the bottom. And I just go along the little tabs here. Don't go overboard or run all over. And before you put the accelerator on it, make sure everything is down good and tight. Everything appears to be good. And I'll do the same thing on the sides. I got to make sure my rubber band is not where I'm going to be gluing. I wanted to get it up in them little scallop spots there. Sure everything's good and tight there, and it is. Now you obviously don't want any glue on the front, so you're going to have to carefully do these on the side here. And I'll let that set for just a minute, and I can take the rubber band off. So there's our little castle guy, our little castle haunted house or whatever you want to call it. And as I said, you could put a LED style tea light in there and you could backlight that. You could also line the back of this with uh, perhaps a yellow cellophane, give it the appearance of uh, being uh, lit up. Now for the big house, I'm going to assemble the base first. This is uh, my bottom layer. This here is going to be my top layer. You can see they line up. So what I'll do here is I'll put CA glue on this piece and I may use a little thicker stuff there I don't get as much squeeze out well this stuff is really a nozzle little plug here it's gonna squeeze hard to get that out of there I just put a little bead down both sides a couple dabs in between now you don't have to use accelerator but it makes things go a lot quicker, but also keep in mind when you're using the accelerator, you don't have long to get that in the right position before everything is set up. So you got to be on the ball here. You got to get it right the first time. So there's our base. So oh, here it is all finished up, sand at the bottom so it sits nice and flat. And there again, there's 10 designs in this package and you can design your own little uh, quirks to it. You can make them larger, you can make them smaller. You can maybe take components off of one and put it on another. That's getting pretty advanced so I didn't go that far into this. 
But that's how you can make these these uh, signs. Haunted houses, I got signs in my mind. We just got an order for a bunch of them. So, yeah, I got to get busy with this making signs now. So, what all do you need to do this? You'll need eighth inch plywood or the crafter plywood from Home Depot. Eighth inch plywood you can get at Home Depot. Ugh. The uh, crafting plywood you can get at a Dollar Tree if you have one by you. And there's different shapes and sizes and it's random when you're going to get what. So you're just going to have to kind of go and look. The uh, vinyl I used here, it's this crafter square stuff. You can see here, they had a bunch of these on clearance for 50 cents. So I got these for 50 cents a roll. I got a whole pile of them upstairs because we use this stuff quite a bit. The other thing I used was CA glue. I used both Tight Bond and Miter Apple and the Miter Apple Accelerator. There will be links in the description probably for the Tight Bond. That's what I use most of the time. The accelerant's the same. The glues are the same. Just different brands. They both do the same thing. This one happens to be thicker than the thin one because this is thick and this is thin. That makes sense. So again with the, uh, the smaller one we did here. I like that look with the uh, texture of the wood on there like that. It kind of looks like uh, some old timey kind of thing. I got a little bit of sanding to do in the back. Not much. Drop a tea light in there. Again, not the candle, but the LED type. Make a light. There'll be a link in the description of where to get the cut files for this on designbundles.net. And as you saw, I modified them from the way they come. And you will need to do the same for whatever laser you have. I did do this all on the longer B1. Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that too because I'm sure they'd love to sell you one. And it's a nice laser. It's got limits, 33 watt head. It's got air assist, comes on automatically. That's pretty cool. So there'll be links for all this stuff in the description. However, not a, nothing here is sponsored. This is all on my own here. So not sponsored by Design Bundles either. I just happen to belong to their uh, site and they, I can get quite a few different designs from there. And I'll be doing some more projects coming up here soon, showing how to take a uh, file for, let's say, it's to do a paper cut on a Cricut or a Silhouette. I'll show you how to do that on a laser and make it out of wood. So if you got anything out of this video that I know got abnormally long, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. Check out the playlist for more beginner laser projects. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.